Hello Channel Nick viewers, I am DS, your psychologist and welcome to another episode on Channel Nick. As you may notice, I am speaking slower than usual because I am still rather sick. But nonetheless, I am still very excited to present to you a topic that I have been thinking about. And it is inspired by this event that I am going to show you next. So a month ago, I was recording in this room and something happened and it was captured on video. So it's a very authentic event and you can see my reaction in this clip. So during the tea break for one of my classes, I also showed this video to my students and I asked them, what do you think happened? None of them was able to guess what happened correctly. So dear viewers, would you like to give it a try? Look at this video and guess what has happened. Of proportion. So what actually happened? So during that video shoot, a lizard actually dropped out of the aircon. So I presume that a lizard was actually living in my aircon and it was a very big fat lizard. This tick. There are some folks who uh, think that the lizard came in to get a break from the heat. So you did hear the tart, right? Like the tart sound. So it is actually the sound of the lizard dropping onto the floor. It came in two parts. The body, which is no longer moving, and a tail that is actually reflexively moving very fast. And it was a very big tail because it was a very fat lizard. So as I turned and looked, I saw that there was a lizard and it was cut into two. It was gross. Immediately, like a reflex action, I covered my ears. So I remembered very clearly that during my primary school days, a teacher actually told us that if we see a lizard drop its tail, immediately we need to cover our ears. So I'm not too sure whether this is a myth, but I still remember that until today. So in that video clip, you saw that the lizard was actually very far away from me. There's no harm or no way that that tail can actually come into my ear. But but as you can see in the video, my reaction was actually very disproportionate to the event itself. But one thing to note is, it is really a very big fat lizard, so it is gross. So I showed this video to many of my students, they said that I was overreacting. So I wondered, am I really overreacting? Or is this something really normal for people of my MBTI type? So I made an analysis, the students with whom I asked are actually people who use the S-I-N-E instead of the N-I-S-E. So the 16 MBTI types can be divided into either S-I-N-E users or N-I-S-E users. So incidentally, all the students that I asked, they are of all different types, but they use the S-I-N-E card. So I began to think along the line of S-I-N-E as opposed to N-I-S-E. Is there a difference between these two types of users? So N-I and S-E are considered to be very primitive functions. On the other hand, S-I and N-E are learned responses. It is only after some time that you learn that you need to collect information or collect food or to explore the surrounding. So in that regard, I believe that people who use the N-I and S-E card they are more reactive and they are also quicker in terms of reflexes. So as you can see just now in the video, when I saw that the lizard has fallen, I immediately just took a look and I understood what happened because my NI told me the entire story. Immediately, I activated my SE to protect myself. It's a very quick response. So I presume that another individual who uses the SI and NE card may want to go and take a look, a closer look at what is happening and then confirm already then it's okay, it's just a lizard. <laughs> so I thought of a scenario which is very similar. So in a lot of the thriller movies, the protagonist shot the antagonist and the antagonist fell down or just lie flat. If I were the protagonist, I would exit immediately. I will not step forward 
to check if the antagonist is really dead. I am not curious and I am not going to be careful. If I were careful, I would shoot another time and that's it. <laughs> Clear. Clear. So fellow NI and SE users, I believe that in circumstances where your life may be threatened, it is more unlikely that you will want to be curious or check. Because curiosity and checking is an NE and SI behavior. In many of my previous videos, I've mentioned that I am a high NI user. So in contrast, I use SE much lesser. Because NI and SE are two different functions lying on the same card, they are supposed to be opposites. So in a way, NI and SE are supposed to be antagonistic. If you want to meditate, so you have to go into your inner world, you have to shut off the external surrounding, right? So you are blocking SE because you want to engage NI. However, is it always true that NI and SE are opposites or they are antagonistic? No, they can play a supporting role for one another. How? So children who are trained in abacus, they can actually have a mental abacus inside their head. So as they are counting, they probably are also going to use their fingers as if they are pushing the bits on the abacus. So mentally, they have a mental abacus over here, but they are using their fingers to push the mental abacus. So they are engaging NI and SE at the same time. So a lot of composers compose music inside their brain, so they have a mental keyboard. But physically, they are also using their fingers to tap on their keyboard in their mental brain. So somehow or another, SE can support NI. So NI and SE need not be in conflict at all. In fact, I think that SE can help NI. How? Let's say, in my imagination, I have something I can say it out or I can act it out. So, as a result, I think that NISE users may be better at charade than SINE users. So, you know the game of charade, right? In charade, you get a, a word where you're supposed to act out for your teammates to guess correctly. So, I'm actually very good at charades. So, I played charade a lot during my university days. And you know, during your university days, there can be very ridiculous words that are supposed to act out, such as tampon. <laughs> so I've, I've actually acted that out before. So what actually happens is you get words like hula hoop. So in your brain, you will think, okay, what is the best, most logical way to act it out? So NI plays this. So NI will think about this and then SE acts it out. I would presume that for an NE or SI user, they are too diffuse, so they are unable to show a consistent idea what the card or what the word they are trying to act out is. So my hypothesis is, people with the NI and SE card will be better at giving charades than people with the SI and NE cards. In fact, I think that people with SI and NE are very bad at guessing charades as well. <laughs> So in this episode, we analyze NI and SE as a single entity. So if NI and SE appears in your cognitive stack, then my hypothesis is that you are more primitive and reactive than your counterparts, which is the NE and SI users. So being more reactive, when confronted with danger, you will act immediately, like cover your ears or run away, also, it is possible that you have a bigger reaction. So when you shout, you might shout louder. We also talked about other ways in which the NISE user may be different with the NESI users. And one of the things that we mentioned is the ability to play the charade game. So down the next few episodes, we will be talking about how MBTI may relate to the games that we actually will be good at and like to play. So dear viewers, if you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ, MBTI and fun stuff. Okay, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye. Bye-bye.